The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, very different book. Uh, this, I did. I read chapters one, two, th three. One, two, and three. Um, this is a very different kind of book than other books. It's very dense, but not in a complex or complicated way. It's just there's so much to it. There's like. There, yeah, there's just so much content. Uh, yeah, content? Not narratively. Um, I mean, to explain the narrative in these three chapters, which are like a quarter of the book, um, there's a guy. He's from the moon. He comes to the earth. Uh, he's kind of feels strange because he's out of place and it's a totally he's just culture shock then we get a flashback chapter where it talks about his life growing up and how different it was that's it that's a quarter of the book but there's so much to that I guess a lot of it's setting um, it I guess to explain the setting we have sort of the planet and its moon. The planet is where the sort of original people are from. It's a kind of like Earth today. Various nation states, various sort of systems of organization and, and government. Um, including capitalist, or as they call it, propertarian, um, and some more authoritarian regimes, um, perhaps some that are more socialist, um, and the sort of background is 170 years ago, this woman sort of got fed up with it and led a group of people or I guess she didn't lead them because she died and is buried on that planet but a group of her followers left uh, she was named Odo I think not the guy from Deep Space Nine um, so they call themselves the Odonians I think um, they left and went to the moon and settled on the moon there had already been some settlements some miners on the moon because the moon has minerals and metals that they can't get on the planet so that sort of keeps trade active between the two. Anyways, they settle on the moon and create sort of, um, not a utopia, but they create their own, their own society. Uh, it's, anar it's anarchist. It's kind of communist, slightly syndicalist. I don't know enough about these things to, to put labels on it, but they they refer to it as anarchists, and there's there's syndical there there are syndicates, um, so yeah, and that's where this guy comes from. He comes from the moon. That's all he knows is this sort of to us a, a strange, commune anarchists, not state group of people community. Um, and it's neat because the first chapter is sort of him coming to Earth to the the proprietarian, the sort of capitalist, sort of a sort of an America, um, sort of place, and we see it through his eyes. So we sort of we're seeing us through the eyes of someone where what we take for granted is completely alien to him. So it, usually it's in in a in sort of a book or a setting like this, it's um, you have the sort of the stand-in for the audience who is experiencing the world for the first time through, and when the audience is experiencing it through their eyes as fresh and new, and and but it's kind of the reverse in this where we're experiencing sort of the norm through the eyes of someone who. Is 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 alien and strange to uh, to us, the reader, if that makes any sense. But anyways, it's a very neat sort of introduction. And then after we get that sort of um, 
introduction, we we do go back uh, in 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 time to, and we get a flashback of this the the life of this this character. We get different vignettes from him from when he was a baby, a child, a teen, a young adult, so on and so forth, um, so that we can kind of we do get that the audience does get that sort of understanding of who this person is, what the society is like that he comes from, and how different it is from ours. Um, so it is very different. There's there's no marriage. There are people sometimes are partnered, uh, but it's kind of frowned upon or looked upon as a, by others as like sort of a strange proprietarian thing. Like, what do you mean you're partnered? Like you think you own this person, or this person owns you, or um, as otherwise they're very open about that. Like people have children, but they don't. They sort of raise them communally, but they still recognize that they're their children. It's not like Plato's Republic, where all the children are sort of given up and no one knows whose kid is whose. They still know whose kid is whose, but they don't. I don't want to say they don't care, but they do, I guess they don't feel the attachment that that child is theirs. They they don't have ownership over that child. They they just sort of see all children as 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 being not theirs, but they 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 are children. So they sort of feel the same way towards all children, and all children sort of like I forget the word that she used. She made up a word for instead of father or mother, it's it's a different word, but it sort of means the same thing, but it can be applied to any adult, whether they're a biological relation or not. So, which feels like it goes against human nature, but maybe not. Maybe if we grew up in, the, in a culture like that, I'm sure if I thought hard enough and, and, and read enough, I'm sure there's cultures like that on Earth where sort of genetic familiar nuclear family bonds are not... Um, genetically linked to human nature they are more cultural um, so she definitely leans on the, the nurture versus nature in the argument of, of how we learn but I still think like when a mother has a child there well I guess that's not always the case a mother's not always has a strong connection to her child but I think for the most part she does anyways um so yeah, there's there's no there's no administration, there's no government hierarchy, there's no authority. I guess is the word. Um, people can get into fights like fist fights, and everyone else just sort of kind of looks at it and moves on with their life. They don't try to interfere. They're like, there's no police force. Um, like when this guy was leaving this planet, a lot of people didn't want him to leave. Um, but they couldn't even form a mob correctly, which it seems like a force, a uh, force of nature, a law of nature. That if you get enough people together, they sort of become a mindless mob. But in this one, they're all so individualistic that not individual. Yeah, how can they be individualistic if they're in a commune of common? But they are individualistic. They each have their own thoughts and ideas, and so they couldn't form a mob enough to stop him. But they did kill one of the people guarding him. But I don't know. It's it's very strange. This this society. Um, they don't. Um, there's no sort of taboos around sex or nudity. Because when he goes to the planet, he's it's like really hot so he's just like not wearing any clothes and like the servant comes in to like house room service sort of guy to clean up and like is shocked by him and he's like goes over and shakes his hand he's completely naked um yeah uh everyone works and it seems like where you work uh on this anarchist society is not shows chosen by you but you can be assigned to work in certain places which is kind of weird um you're and you're assigned by there's sort of an administrative 
bureau that's the closest thing they have to a government, but it, I think he says the government doesn't control people, it controls production. So if something needs to be produced, um, they get sort of the syndicates um, and enough work crews together to, to make sure this gets done, but they don't... Yeah, there's no money or no... Prop there's no property at all, like any form of private property. Um, they, like, if you, if you need food, you go to a place that has food and they give you food. If you need a room, you go to a place with rooms. Um, yeah, there's no houses, it seems like there's just communal dorms you go in. And you say, oh, do you have a room available? Yeah, yeah, I go to this room. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, it's very, very um, no property. And that includes, like I said, human relationships. Um, you don't have anything. Like, even they have a different language where their their verb for to have or to own something is, is more translates to, I am using this right now. Uh, not, this is mine. This, this is being used by me at the moment. Therefore, that's sort of the connection I have to it. It's not an, a one on, of, of ownership. Um very so yeah it's very interesting so after we get sort of the backstory and an understanding of what life is like for the character Dr. Shevek is his name like even the title doctor even though he's this that's another thing we learn about him is he's like a super genius physicist and he's he, they say, he says a couple times that his people, sort of the anarchists, they took one step away from society, and he has taken two steps. He took one step in that he's one of the anarchists, but then another step at that he's traveling back to the proprietarian society. He's the first one of his kind to go back there, and because of that, and his desire, he's doing so because he wants a desire for the two to reconcile and to, to get closer and for them to be sort of a universal brotherhood and, and whatnot. But he feels like he definitely does not exist in the proprietarian, or uh, belong to the proprietarian society, but he also sort of betrayed his own, his own people, so he doesn't, he, he doesn't belong in either world. Um, and he sort of feels like he never did. Like, there's one scene when he's a child and he explains the, um, I don't know the name for it, I'm sure there's a name for it, the sort of philosophical argument, thought experiment, whatever, where if an object has to get between point A and point B, it can never actually get to point B because it always has to go halfway between A and B and then halfway between that point and B and then halfway between that point and keep it, and it always has to go half, there's always halfway for it to go so it never actually reaches there. Anyways, and it, as a child he sort of comes up with this on his own and thinks of it as a joke so he like tells the people at the school or whatever he's at like hey, check out this funny thought experiment that I came up with. And they're like, you didn't come up with that. You can't, like, stop being so egotistical. You didn't create that theory. That's not your own. I read that in a book before. Someone else already came up with it. Like, you can't have ideas. You can't own ideas or something. And so that sort of makes him feel like he doesn't belong in that society, if that makes any sense. But he's also a super genius. Um, and we find out in the third chapter that or sort of get hints of it, which I'm thinking that um, his one of his philo not philosophical physics his theories of physics is he's working on sort of a unifying theory, not a general anyway, so a unifying theory between a couple of theories or something uh, that'll eventually lead to the potential for faster than light travel, and it's I think that why this proprietarian society has accepted him and invited him as a, as a guest and is like setting him up all nice and traveling him around, giving him this award and this university posting and is because they want, that that's what they want from him. They want to use, they want to own him and his research and his mind to get for themselves this faster than light travel that they can profit off of. And I feel like that's our sort of setup for our narrative. Um, 
but I don't know if that uh, it's just sort of hinted at at this point because uh, in the third chapter he sort of he sort of s uh, led around and explores the world uh, his yeah, the world um, and one of the places he goes to is a space spacecraft production facility and one of the engineers is like yeah once you invent faster than light travel this will be all pointless and Chevette kind of shuts down at that uh, and he visits the grave of Odo. Is her name actually Odo? Yeah. Laia Aceo Oda. Laia Aceo Oda. To be whole is to be part. True voyage is return. True voyage is return. That's what it says. On, that's like sort of the epitaph on her grave. Um, and I wonder if that's like true voyage is return. Like Yes, we voyaged out to the moon to live there, but we have to at some point come back. Because um, he says that, like, a pioneer has to return back home and tell the others what they've found, otherwise they're just an, an, an adventurer living in exile. Um, so yeah, that's the first three chapters of The Dispossessed. I have read this book before, don't remember anything about it at all, which is part of the reason I'm doing those videos is just to try and help me remember because there's so many books I've read that I have no recollection of I have no idea what's going to happen and I have read this before um yeah oh and the um on the propertarian sort of main planet um people aren't kept as property other than as sort of what we'd call wage slaves like the property classes, the capitalists um, owning their workers, own, owning the production of their workers while providing the bare minimum they can to keep their workers um, alive. Um, actually, there's that's. Anyways, um, women are very much property of uh, men in this one or on this planet um, whereas on the moon and the anarchist moon women and men are completely equal it doesn't even come into someone's mind that they wouldn't be um, but on this planet um, like there's no women scientists their women are considered like below average or below male intelligence um, weaker only as sex objects um, which at first I'm like, the author's just doing this so that we're like, oh, the, these guys are the bad guys because not just are they, it's not just is it communism versus capitalism, but it's equality versus um, misogyny and sexism. But it does make sense in a society where they're all about property and ownership and owning that that would extend to other people. Um, I'm not sure if they even agree that women are are people because they don't see them as equal to men. But I'm sure that'll come up. I think I, I think a vague memory is that there is some woman that uh, gets involved with Shivek, which Shivek uh, has has children has as an ownership, more like has had children, he has produced children um, but again, they're back on the moon, there's no nuclear family they're living their life, they're growing up he's not raising them because that's they have a community to raise them um, I don't know if we're uh, we know the mother of his children I think his mother's mentioned that after after his mother has him, she goes and works somewhere, and his father like wants to be with his mother, but the mother's not interested in in that. So, the human relation aspect, human relationship aspect of sort of the the lack of lack of property is is very interesting. It's a very extreme take, but it is very interesting. Um. So yeah, I'm sh I know there's a lot I've skipped and missed because, like I said, this is such a dense book. There's so much to this. 
just about every page has some very like deep thought provoking um issues in 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 language um yeah so and it like i said it's a very different book than uh, a narrative driven escapist uh entertainment style novel um this is something very different I'm sure there's a name for a classification of, of different types of novels rather than just by genre, but I'm not educated enough to know that. Um, so yeah, that's the first quarter of The Dispossessed.